All right, Fulcrum of Truth. All right, another Welcome. episode. How you doing? Good, good. It's uh, it's been a few days. Uh, we've had some exciting developments in some of the research we've been doing. Yeah, you could uh, say that's why we haven't recorded. I mean, exactly, we've been, exactly. It's been uh, 12 hours a day pumping away at the whiteboard because we really made a big breakthrough in the math for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that at some point. Um, but, you know, another thing I kind of want to put out there for the viewers is that what we're doing, even though it's not live, it's basically live. We're just talking. There's no real editing happening here. Yeah. It's just, yeah. and we don't have any pre-planned script. We don't, you know, maybe I come into it and I say, all right, I'm going to ask you this question and, and you have 15 minutes to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's generally how it is. And I like we're, it that we're way. We're just talking. Because then it, it keeps it uh, more just kind of like a general conversation rather than some type of debate or like digging into details exactly. and facts and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you can just explore whatever. And today, I think we uh, we agreed we're going to talk about light. Yeah, which is just uh, a humongous topic, but uh, definitely something that we talk about all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you put something up on the whiteboard for me yesterday, and I want to dive into that a little. Yeah, it was just, um, you know, I've always talked about how my beliefs are that what we're seeing out there is not really what's out there, that we're being fooled essentially by light. And, uh, you know, for some reason, there's this understanding that light travels in straight lines in outer space or something, because from what I see and everybody says that what's out there is sitting where it's at. Nobody says that what we're looking at is not really where we're looking at it at and it's coming from some other place. Mm -hmm. But then when you watch black hole documentaries and people explain black holes and physics documentaries and stuff, they talk about light being sucked into that black hole as well as light wrapping around the backside of that black hole and coming back towards the viewer. So, it's just hard to understand how there's so many black holes supposedly out there in outer space, but light is all traveling in straight lines and we can see hundreds of light years straight out, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think I said this in one of our videos that we, we haven't posted yet. Um, or maybe it is one that we posted, but I mentioned like at some distance, if there's so many black and let's just take for granted that black holes exist. Okay. And that they behave the way that physicists say that they do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've never <clears throat> seen a black hole myself. I have no idea. I've never I done math on one. So. I'm going to just like yeah. take for granted black holes exist and that they bend light the way that physicists say yeah. they do. Okay. okay. Now, if there's billions of black holes out there, no matter what direction you look, there's probably a black at some distance. There's about there's a black hole. Yeah, I would say so, right? Right. Mm -hmm. at, eventually, no matter how far out you look, you're gonna encounter a black hole mm -hmm. if they exist and if they do the things that they say that physicists say they do. Yeah. Um, then you can't trust any of the light coming into you. Yeah, I don't think we can, and it's it's we see too many examples on Earth. You know, for going even black holes. I mean, that this is yeah. like obvious. We what don't you're even saying. need that. But on yeah. Earth, we see light bending in the most amazing ways when it hits different elements, when it hits different uh, objects and different materials. Why is it that space is so perfectly straight lines of light? And I, I, I've just never seen anybody explain this. You know, we know that light bends with gravity. We know that light can be affected by forces all over, and. Uh, I think you were talking about one of the ideas you were proposing earlier about how uh, if you look out so far, you know, if you have so many photons of light in a, in a spectrum, in a visual spectrum that you're looking at, you know, how are those condensing down to the point that you're viewing from? Is that kind of the concept you were, you were bringing? So, yeah, I can go into that a little bit. Um, I was watching a video actually uh, on the uh, two slit, experiment like mm -hmm. the quantum uh how light is a wave and electrons are a wave and they interfere with with each other and i got to thinking two different possible things okay um so the one video i was watching 
they used a human hair, actually, to split a laser beam. And when the laser beam got split and they put smoke in the room, what you saw was like a bunch of different beams come off it, okay? That's the interference pattern. So some light has to go around to the right, some light has to go around to the left, and those two things interfere. And they end up on the background as like bright spots and dark spots. Yeah, the dark spots are supposedly where the waveforms that's, overlap, canceling exactly. each other that's out. That's right? where the waveforms overlap and they cancel out. Okay. Now, imagine that we are sitting, we're in a physical place, right? Our physical place for some things coming from the outside is in a bright spot. But for other things, it's in a dark spot. It should be. And so <laughs> there are absolutely, to me, no question about it, there are things that we cannot see that are out there. Yeah. Because <clears throat> when you bend all the light together and let it interfere, we're sitting in a spot where it just doesn't show. Yeah. You know, and that, we don't see it. That spectrum and that waveform, you know, understanding the frequency and everything that we're seeing this phenomenon appear in, it's in everything. Yeah. So, how many systems throughout our reality do we have where these blank spots are showing up that we can't measure, that we are, we know are there due to these experiments like the double slit, but they just cannot be a phenomenon that's measured, but they're affecting everything around it, you know? Yeah, so in that theory, which, you know, obviously we haven't chased down very much, light is coming in from some far source. And then our sun, because it's so close to us and such a high magnitude, interferes yeah. with what is coming in. And so some things, if they're sitting in the right spot, we see it. If they're not sitting in the right spot, then we don't see it because yeah. it just matches up with what our sun is shining on us. Yeah, um, I think that's a really good. I yeah. mean, it's it's an idea that is hard to argue with without, you know, nailing down the details of it and doing experiments and stuff, right? Yeah. Because to me, it seems like a kind of an advancement of the thought, you know, where of where the two slit experiments going. You know, they're trying to figure out quantum stuff at a, at a at a at an atomic level with this, but in reality, it could be appearing at all different scales throughout our universe. And I'm not even at the two slit experiment yet mm -hmm. i'm just saying let's assume that there is a galaxy out there yeah. and it is shining light on us and that light is interfering with the light from our sun yeah. and from the other close by stars and there's going to be dead points right and so when we think about things like dark matter like oh wow i i can't explain why there's so much matter out it, it yeah. seems like there should be more matter and I can't see it. Well, this is why. Does that go for atoms? Right. Well, let me ask you that. It might. Does that go for, uh, you know, if, if what you're saying is making me think about how, okay, well, if, if, if there's light missing, right, and light is just photons and light is just frequency in a spectrum, right, well, the vibration of the atoms and the vibration of everything that we sense could also be exhibiting this. So is there, do you think there could be matter that we cannot actually feel but yes. it is there. So when you say dark yes. matter, so you're, yeah. So Absolutely. It's, it's, so because everything. we're in a dead spot. Well, we're in the part where the two waves come together yeah. and they're a minimum. Or we're in the two, we're in the part where the waves come together and they're just level. So what I'm okay? saying is rather so we're than... we're sitting at a spot where the boat on the ocean doesn't feel anything. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear what you're saying, but extend that to what I'm saying with, is there a thousand microscopic yeah, empty always. spots? This okay. is always. So yes. these holes exist everywhere in our reality, yes. and we just can't see them due to them being in that spot. Yes, it's imperceptible. That's an incredible idea. I really like that idea. Because it we're just, and it's just because we're physically in a dead spot. We can't, yeah. we literally cannot see it. Yeah, I mean, I did not expect you to go there with this, but it makes it, it does make a lot of sense. Um, it explains a lot of dark matter, you know, things that we're yeah. talking about. Invis There's stuff out there that we can't see and measure, but it's there in the math. Uh, I think that it's um, it really goes 
you know, to get into some of the philosophy of understanding that it's the in-between is where the infinity is, you know? And if these spots that we can't measure are the in-betweens, like not being able to measure life, where is life coming from? How is reproduction occurring? Like how is life and new life being pulled into new cells and all these type of situations? That effect in that system could be held within these in-betweens yeah. in the points that we can't sense and measure in the frequencies, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I want to go next level. <clears throat> okay. All right, so now I'm going to pull the two-slit experiment in, okay? All Which right. I, I told you about a little yeah, yeah. Earlier. You said, you even told me, I'm gonna, and I'm going to put you on a record here saying this. You said we're going to do it. We are going to do okay. it. Okay. We are going to do it. I, it. I learned that it is like within our reach okay. uh, to do this right. and not like <clears throat> completely, um, you know, we can't shoot single electrons, but we can do photons. We can do a laser. And, we can create an analogous say, system yes, for the yes. double slit, right? That will yep. demonstrate it. Yeah. So. Now, the next level of this for me is that when you look out far enough into the sky and you try to see something that's really, really far away, all right, you basically have to collapse your view down to a very, very small point, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Such a small point, if you want to look billions of light years away, you have to collapse it down to such a small point that you are essentially looking at the individual quantum points, even though I don't necessarily yeah. uh, accept that they It seems like a exist. single photon thickness or something, right? Right. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. That photon has to be pointed exactly at you. Yeah. You're not now. we know or we see or what we observe and experience with the two slit experiment is that when you're not observing it behaves like a wave mm -hmm. right like a very field, clearly yeah, yeah very clear field a very clear wave mm -hmm. the moment you observe it it changes okay so now i'm looking deep into space i'm looking really really far out at a very small spot and what I'm doing to the universe is I'm saying, I want to observe <laughs> this. But, yeah. hold on, that happened a really long time ago. So they say. And yeah. So they say. And I'm forcing it, right? So when you don't observe, there's a superposition, and it is a wave. It behaves like a wave. Um, but when you introduce an observer... You force it to choose. Which slit did you go through? So when I look real far out and I collapse that lens down, I force the light to say, which slit are you going through? Okay? Man, you know you're also saying something <laughs> else right here. I know. Do you, um, well, do you realize <laughs> in my mind you just created a field that's the distance of your viewpoint to the thing you're looking at because it's behaving as a wave field yeah. until you observe it in so, the past gary so there's in the a past yeah but it was that large yeah right the yep. field <laughs> the, yes. the field had yes. to have been the distance from there to you for you to collapse it into a particle or and this is why you know like, what i mean and so like i already doesn't seem of, possible i'll be honest with you <laughs> well <laughs> i already kind of explained you know, where I maybe dark matter is sitting, okay. right? We're sitting in a dead spot, so we don't see some of the stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to, with this, I feel like it somewhat explains dark energy, right? The idea that the world, uh, that the universe is expanding because we look out and we see this redshift. That's it. Yeah. That's the only evidence that anybody has for dark yeah. energy. And, and it, is it hinges on a bunch of other understandings about light, essentially. Yeah, it's right? based on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when, when I look at this double slit experiment and I try to apply it to something that's happening really, really far away, I don't... I, I haven't developed the explanation, but I've told you, I think of it like rendering, right? So when, 
I'm playing Minecraft or something, and I want to like look really far away in Minecraft uh, or some video game it, or zoom in. It has to render that distance, yeah. right? It's in there. It's in the computer. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to ask it first. Mm -hmm. Like, please tell me what's way out there. Yeah. And when we try to zoom out far into the universe, we're asking the universe to render itself in a place. That's a, that's a good explanation for how a field becomes a behaves yeah. like a particle after you yeah. measure it. And, all and that, when we know. ask it to render far enough out, it takes time. Like it doesn't yeah. happen instantaneously. You know that 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 brings me to what I wanted to make a point of is exactly like you're saying the distance that it has to travel is can be measured as a time this, this is a speed yes. it's not instantaneous mm -hmm. the speed of light they say is measured in uh, fixed i think right i time. Don't forget the speed of light well, but okay what yes. they say right this is how whatever speed it is there's a time that you're saying this render distance and time needs to be covered and it happens over time it's not instantaneous i am so einstein actually had theories about gravity being instantaneous right that it was a static field that didn't travel like a wave that it, yeah. you know wherever it was at in the solar system was being affected by each other instantly if if something broke apart this would all happen instantly not over time like we're talking about with light yeah and we need to we need to do a video on mond yeah because um, we've talked about that but yeah yeah, yeah. so sure. with with that being said um i really hope to one day discover something wow that means a big statement that it came out like that but yeah i really hope that one day and i have a fearing feeling that or a theory at least that there will be some type of instantaneous static connection through the fabric of the universe okay so i like think it's possible the ability to yeah. push on the rod right here and a hundred light years away it moves out there without yeah. the, the the uh the distance to having to be rendered as you're saying right or the wave having to travel through that solid object all the way to get yeah. to the other side i think I, it's possible and yeah. that will be the true fabric of our reality around us our universe you know what i mean when we're pushing those nuts and bolts now we're no longer pushing the waves we're actually pushing the things that are making you know are the waves or something like that you know so that that just made you know you made me think of that when you were talking about that distance of rendering right so when you were able to because because remember like when we talk about um uh microscopes and, and electron microscopes and the most precise microscopes that we have nowadays okay some of them are feel kind of like a record mm -hmm. okay where it will drag a uh, atomically small needle across a, a surface and then draw it on a computer and show what it's measuring and that's how you see it okay if you were able to find that static non-waveform acting material or fabric of the universe you'd be able to measure things out in the universe with it like a feeler yeah instantly mm -hmm. it'd be pretty cool yeah i like it yeah <laughs> anyway so i just had that idea while you're so while you were but i want to go all the way to back light. to the beginning yeah, because yeah. you drew a thing on uh the whiteboard and i mean maybe we can embed an image i know yeah. i know we haven't done that up till now but well, it, I, I kind of pointed out at the beginning that these are basically live conversations. Yeah, no, no, yeah. If we're not I don't live. put it in so there. So there's no editing that goes on here, but maybe yeah. we'll put it in here. If I don't because... put it on there, I'll describe it very easily. It's just yeah. an arch with a solid object at the top of the arch inside. But I want to give a specific you know. example. So like when you look at the sky and you look at, let's say, Orion. Mm -hmm. Describe that. Uh in terms of uh, the star system orion okay. we believe to be within our galaxy yeah but we see it but in a where we place. look in the sky yeah. we see it in a certain place so i mean i guess you could say that the things if when we look off the surface of the earth straight out right mm -hmm. and we might see constellations out there by the by the explanations of black holes and the way they bend light that constellation could literally be 90 degrees offset to our left and we don't see it there because all of the light coming from that constellation is being bent around a black hole and making it appear in front of us, even though it's actually physically located to our left. So with all of this light bending and wrapping around itself in the outer space, how do we have this confidence that what we're looking at is directly straight out and the light is coming straight in? Exactly. You know? We don't. Yeah. We don't. And yeah. even within our own galaxy, we know or we think we know that there's a 
supermassive black hole at the center, Sagittarius A or whatever, mm -hmm. and we observe it and we see crazy stuff happening around it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so like constellations get... like Orion or the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper or what, whatever you want to look at, Virgo, Scorpio, all of yeah. this, right? I'm a sailor. I like all the constellations. <laughs> yeah, I can give you an example, actually, <laughs> another one. So imagine like uh, when we think about the path that a lot of our, for anybody that's listening that has a little understanding of how the satellites that travel away from Earth, like the uh, you know, ones that go to other planets and uh, ones that have traveled, even like Voyager and, and stuff like that, the ones that have traveled far in our universe or in terms of away from our planet they travel through these spirally swinging paths where they go around other planets and they're using all the gravities out there of the objects to to kick relative these, to right? how we observe it relative to how we observe it yes. but that's essentially the path right yeah. and when i think about light coming in from deep space I think of it coming in like that, swirling yes, around all yes. the different bending objects that are out there, the gravity wells that are out there. The light cannot be coming in straight like a crow flies. It has to follow the same paths as all the forces to get here. So And so I want to leave with you with this. How do you know that when we look outside our galaxy, we're not just looking at ourselves? Yeah. That, okay, yeah. Look, if everything is swirling out there and light can bend, then how do you know that we're sitting here and the galaxy sent some light out and it came back around and we look at it here and we think that's like 10 billion light years away because it traveled such a long distance before it reached us. Yeah. But we're just looking at ourselves. I mean, and there's a, along with that, the relative nature of the universe makes it almost impossible to confidently it's, say yeah. we're right here and it's right here, you know? And it's like, be, with that being said, and then taking into account that light moves the way it does, you really got to be careful about what you're trying to explain. Yeah. And I think the point is that something could be right next to me and I could think it's 13 billion light years away. Yeah. Because the light that's bouncing off it is traveling out seven and a half billion light years before it turns around and it comes back to me. Mm -hmm. And even though it's right here, right directly next to me, or even right on top of me, I look at it and I think it's 13 billion light years away. Okay, so I got, a, I got another one for you just to add here to the topic. A yeah. nice little bonus idea. So what about light scattering and like fractaling? and the ability uh, that's for another video no you hear me though <laughs> just just to touch on it real quick i mean the yeah. fact that we see all the constellations and all the stars out there and we see all these things that are so similar to each other but they're like you know these are these are like uh star systems and stuff like that that we see and they're all we can map them say they're all like this one this one this one this one and this one we oh, have the categories of that. them they all look alike yes so it's like are these through a prism are these is it possible that we're we're you know and and this goes into what i've always told you from the beginning right i have an understanding that was instilled in me from you know from god that when we look out in the outer space we're not looking out in the outer space you know it's a it's like um essentially our consciousness create this out there yeah you know it's like this is the best thing that our mind can do with what's coming in with out there from out there because yeah. we can't conceive it and if we were if we were to get all the way out there we'd end up finding out it's not what we thought right and this also leads me to the the theory i had a long time ago about you know how the measurement um problem works right where um if you uh you can take infinite steps forward half as far as the previous step and never get to where you need to go sure right yeah. and this is this is the uh this is this is like an old greek mm -hmm. philosophical uh paradox right um now, I think that the edge of our solar system is actually like that. So I think that as we travel away from the center of our solar system, if there is a center due to the relativeness of everything, uh, that as we believed that we were traveling another 400 miles or 1,000 miles through space, right, we would actually be covering less and less distance as we were going further and further out. And this is kind of just a, a theory yeah, of the way I've, space is. discussed expands. ideas about that. Yeah with you before i'm kind of uh you know my position on it right now currently is that i be kind of believe 
the things we see within the solar system mm -hmm. uh, and within the galaxy. Outside of the galaxy, I trust nothing. Yeah. Zero. I, I don't galaxy, trust so not just anything solar we see outside okay. of the galaxy. And even the galaxy itself, I question. Um, well, there's a giant moat around our solar system. I think they talk about where yeah. there's just this massive distance of nothing. And it's like, all right, so why is there nothing close to our solar system? At all? I mean, hundreds of light years, I think it is. You know what I mean? Compared to the distances well, of our planets. Well, we think planets. we're right like four light years, I think, to the next closest star, Proxima Centauri. I think it's further. like four, four and a half light yeah. years to Proxima. And, um, but four and a half light years it could be sitting on top of me right and just whoosh. yeah <laughs> right yeah, the first black right hole here, could the, be right the, there yeah, yeah exactly and i've like told I'm, you about the blocker right that yeah. there could be some type of object in space that yeah. blocks our view exactly. of light so that we can't it, it like keeps so us from seeing it i like I, anything outside our galaxy i just totally distrust mm -hmm. what's coming in um Within our galaxy, I think I mentioned to you before, right? We just had this, created this picture of the Milky Way. And they mapped 3 billion stars. Wow. It took two years. Do you know how many stars they think are in the Milky Way? How many? Almost a trillion. And they mapped So they mapped 1%. Yeah. Three percent, whatever. Uh, okay. So two years it took to map this tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of what we think is just within our galaxy. Yeah. You're gonna tell me that in in two hours you're gonna look thirteen billion light years out? No. Yeah. No. I don't. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. It's it's just <laughs> there's too much. Uh... Too many new discoveries made that rewrite yeah. everything they thought they knew over and over and over again. It's like, yeah. stop. And this is why I just want to focus more on what's local to us. Yeah. Let's focus on Earth. Let's focus on yeah. feeding everyone. Let's yeah. focus on, you know, our neighboring uh, galaxy and or, well, like our neighboring saying, uh, planets. And let's take care of our due to own our, planet and things like that. Due to our lack of understanding of light right now. Yeah. Right? And we'll get there. Yeah, it's important to, I, I told you before, one of the things with Elon Musk that I have kind of a beef with is him spending all this money on very... Oh, you're going to bring Elon in? Yeah, I got, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna right. call him out, basically. I mean, right. there's too much, uh, you know, going to Mars and trying to terraform Mars and all this space <laughs> travel stuff. It, yeah, yeah it's, it's important to, in my opinion, instead of looking up and out, to look down and in. And see what it is about the Earth we can figure out first, because we have so many mysteries here Man. <laughs> already. You know what I mean? If we can terraform a different planet, why don't we just terraform our own planet? That's a, such right? a simple I mean... <laughs> understanding. Yeah, you said it. I agree. It's 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 so simple. But uh, there's so many there are so many things that are here on the Earth that are mysteries that need to be understood before. Because think about it, right? We could th we could focus on advancing technologies on the earth and understanding uh things in the universe here so much better we could discover something like teleportation or like the ability to, to you know without having to travel i'm not going to go there i i think there's value i think we should explore our local neighborhood you know including mercury venus um, mars jupiter even the outer planets even though that gets into a distance where I start to question exactly what we're seeing. Yeah. But we have, well, we're told think, we've sent probes out there. Yeah, but um, Dave, I think you would agree. Yeah, the, the pictures problems, that came back were well, no, not no, no. that impressive. The problems that we have here on Earth right now <laughs> yeah, are too exactly. great. Let's focus that. on, yeah. let's focus it's, it's, at home. There's his value in it, but yeah. right now, that amount of value placed in other places would do a lot better. Yes, yeah. I agree. And that's I agree. the whole point of this channel, and you know that, and I think all the viewers should hear that. That is, you know, we, we're we talking about science, and we work on all these projects and everything, and honestly, every single thing we do and every second we spend is to better humanity. It's to it's to improve humanity. You know what I mean? we There's no um, there's no real gain other than that. You can't get buried with money. You know what I mean? You can't. You, you could give it to your kids, but they can make it themselves. But to better the planet and to better humanity for everybody is like the most rewarding thing to do with your life, we think. So, yes, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. So, likes, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Yeah. yeah, make sure you subscribe. And anybody that watches, yeah, hit that subscribe button. And, uh, you know, 
just to get us started. We're trying to get these followers up, and then we can keep uh, bringing you more content and keep working on the projects we're working on. Yeah, and we got good stuff coming. Yeah, let us know what you think about light. Yeah. That'd be cool. All All right, right. thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks.